in conflict to listen to Christian music like Toby Mac and Jars of Clay outside the auspices of worship. Now, some people might say, well, who in the world is Toby Mac and Jars of Clay? Notice that we have the word Christian music in italics. It's religious music, but these kind of groups sing religious music to, with the accompaniment of instruments of music. And so we're really being asked, is it okay to sing and to listen to psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to the accompaniment of instrumental music outside of the worship. Well, let's start first with inside the worship. How about that? In the churches of Christ, we've been extremely dogmatic, have we not, about a cappella singing only in worship. Isn't that true? Notice I use that little word dogmatic. Everybody goes, oh, they're dogmatic, as if that's bad. That's not bad. Not if you look up the definition. Conforming to doctrine, dogmatic. There's some things it's okay to be dogmatic on, folks. Nothing wrong with that. And the world might ask, well, why are you so dogmatic about a cappella music? Well, it involves a matter of what? Divine authority, doesn't it? Everything we do, religiously, we're supposed to have divine authority. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks unto God and the Father by Him. Everything we do, in word, in, do, in deed, everything, we must have the name of Jesus to authorize it. When we look at the New Testament and the command to sing, that's all we find, isn't it? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, Ephesians 5, 19. The only authority we have in worship is to sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. Folks, there is no authority for instruments of music in the New Testament in worship to the Almighty God. There's no authority for that. Using them is what? And addition. And the Bible condemns additions to His Word, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. He that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Revelation 22, 18. I find it interesting too that if you go back and you study church history, for 600 years... There are no instruments of music used in the worship of the church. Even when the church apostatized into the Catholic church, there is no instruments of music in the church for the first 600 years. Even the word a cappella means in the manner of the church. This is how the church did it. How did they do it? Without instruments. So it's very clear, isn't it? That we should not use instruments of music in our worship. Now, as far as outside of our worship assembly, most individuals believe that playing religious songs on instruments of music is acceptable outside of worship. Don't they? Many members of the church even play guitars, pianos to psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs outside of the worship assembly. And many Christians like to listen to Christian music. That is, music with the accompaniment of instruments that are psalms and hymns and spiritual songs sung outside of the worship service. Listen on their headphones, listen to driving down the road in their car, wherever it is, at home. And most of the time we say, that's perfectly fine. It's not in the worship, can't do it in worship, but out here, it's okay. So the person is asking, is it really okay? There's only one verse that bears hard on my mind, okay? And I mean it bears hard on my mind. 
And it's James 5, verse 13. James, an inspired writer, says this, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any among you merry? Let him sing psalms. Now let's talk about James 5, verse 13 for just a minute. Notice first, the verse is not referring to a worship service. Not referring to that. Is any among you afflicted? Guess what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to pray. Is any among you merry? Let him what? Let him sing psalms. The authorization is what? To sing. That's what James says, to sing. Now, here's my question. Why don't we apply the same logic here as we apply to Ephesians 5, 19? We say Ephesians 5, 19 applies to worship. He commands us to sing. Therefore, that's what we must do is sing and we cannot play instruments of music. We now have a verse, James 5, 13, that involves something outside of worship. And what does he tell us to do? He says to sing psalms. And my question is, why don't we apply the same logic to James 5, 13 as Ephesians 5, 19? We don't for some reason. I just ask why. Some will reply this way. Well, Vic, the Bible doesn't say you cannot use instruments of music outside of the worship assembly. It doesn't say that. Here's my problem. Folks, that's not the way that you and I go about obtaining Bible authority. We don't obtain Bible authority by what the Bible doesn't say. We, that's what we've told the denominational world all along, haven't we? What we do is we go into the Bible and we find out what the Bible has to say about a topic. And we abide by what the Bible has to say, not about what the Bible doesn't say. So what does the Bible say? The Bible says, is any among you marry? Let him sing songs. Now, if we abide by the principle that I just put before you, guess what? I know in my mind, we will never, ever, ever be wrong in the sight of God. Never. That's the principle by which we operate, isn't it? And I know too, that when I stand before God, there's only going to be one standard of judgment, one standard of authority by which I'm judged. We mentioned that in our previous lesson, and that's what? By the Word of the living God. John 12, 48. Now here's my last point on this. All I'm trying to do is to be consistent in our application of the Word of God. If we take one verse that says something and we make this application of it, and then we have another verse that says this, we are to make the same type of application to our lives in order to be consistent in our interpretation of God's Word. Got to do that.